Uh, good morning. Let's open our Bible in the book of Acts chapter 9. Today we will be talking about learning to walk in the fear of the Lord. <clears throat> in verse 31 of chapter 9, they had the churches rest throughout all Judea and, in Gal and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. We're multiplied. <clears throat> Let's pray. I have the Father, thank the Lord again for this day. Thank the Lord <clears throat> for this opportunity to to hear your word, to to learn more about uh, your word, Lord. Pray that you give us wisdom and knowledge that we need, Lord, as so that we may understand what you have uh, it's for us and we continue to be in our midst. Fill us with your spirit, Lord, so we may, we may worship you in spirit and bring my calling glory and want to praise in Christ most precious name. We pray. Amen. In writing about the early church, Luke recorded, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Note that they were walking in the fear of the Lord. In, in writing of the church of, at Philippi, Paul, th Paul told them, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, and not as in my presence only, but how much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, the concept of fear and trembling in connection with God is not a popular sub subject today. You know, a lot of a lot of churches just want to hear about God's law. We just want to hear, well, um, you know, <clears throat> God's long suffering, things that God will do for us, the things that God that God will do for you. Sometimes when we point out God's righteous indignation, holiness, and justice, people reply, "My God is not like that." You know, some people like, forget that doesn't want to hear that God is also a uh, a jealous God, that God is also can also punish those. <clears throat> excuse me. That there's also an angry God, that that God is also uh, a God that um, uh, that, that that will act uh, that will give revenge. They don't want to see the, I guess we could say the bad side of God. You know, people just want to hear about God's love. Love. The emphasis on God's love and mercy today is probably a reaction to the hellfire and brimstone preaching of another generation. Mm -hmm. But could it be that we have gone to other extreme where there is no concept of fear and trembling as it relates to the Christian? Could this be why many Christians are apathetic in their service? Where, um, you know, they just go whenever they feel where they, it's just okay to, like, as long as I go to church, as long as I come to church, I don't have to do everything else. Could it, be that, could it be that we have forgotten whom we should fear if we are enlightened in our service? Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In this lesson, I hope to accomplish three things. Define the fear of the Lord. Point out why the fear of the Lord is important to the Christian. Suggest how, he, how we can develop healthy fear of the Lord without going to one extreme or the other. We don't have to fear anything else. We don't have to fear uh, whatever the world is, is doing. We have to fear the Lord. Let's define the fear of the Lord. The word fear. In Hebrew, the word is yira, yir, ah, and, in, and is used in the Old Testament to describe a fear, terror, awesome or a, ther a terrifying thing, and, you know, something that causes fear, or fear of God, respect, reverence, piety. The Greek word is phobos, and it is used to describe fear, dread, terror that which strikes terror. In connection with the fear of the Lord, it is often defined as reverence or awe. 
it's not like you know we're scared of him. It's not what well, uh, we are. It's not that we are afraid of him, but it is a reverence of of, of awe, which is fine as far as it goes. But I wonder if this definition truly goes far enough. For though the terms reverence and awe imply a place of trembling, do most people make the connection? The fear of the Lord should include a place for trembling. Even as Paul indicated in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. By combining fear and trembling, the Greek word, uh, uh, sorry, it's a train of thought. The fear of the Lord should include a place for trembling, even as Paul indicated in Philippians 2, verse 12, by combining fear and trembling. The Greek word for trembling is tromos. It means a trembling or quaking with fear. Just as one would like to tremble in the presence of one who would take our life, so Jesus taught us to fear the Lord in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And when we come to the presence of the Lord, do we tremble at His presence? Or do we find ourselves uh, with fear and trembling? Proper fear of the Lord would then include reverence and awe, being afraid to offend God in any way. A trembling and quaking if one knows they have offended God and have not obtained forgiveness. The value of such an attitude is seen as we continue on. You know, many people just come to church like nonchalantly, come to church because, you know, probably their family dragged them into church. Probably you know, nowadays when they come to church, it seems like they don't have fear and trembling. They don't have they don't revere God. We can see that the world doesn't revere God. That they don't have fear and trembling towards God. The value of such an attitude is seen as we continue on and now notice the importance of fear of the Lord. From the book of Proverbs we learn the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Let's, let's look at that. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord will cost will also cause one to hate evil. In Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. 8 and 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance in an evil way. And the forward mouth do I hate. And also the fear of the Lord will prolong life in chapter 10, verse 27. The fear of the Lord for long in days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. And in verse 14, verses 26 to 27, the fear of the Lord provides strong confidence and, and is a fountain of life. And in verse chapter 16 and verse 6, the fear of the Lord prompts one to depart from evil. The fear of the Lord leads to satisfying life and spirits one from much evil from Proverbs chapter 19 verse 23. The fear of the Lord is the way of, to riches and honor and life in Proverbs chapter 22 verse 4. But the fear of the Lord is very, very, um, almost, almost what I was saying. The fear of the Lord is what keeps us alive. That when we hate evil, we, we, the fear of the Lord will prolong life. The fear of the Lord provides strong confidence and is the fountain of life. It prompts us to depart from evil. And the, the more we fear the Lord, we don't want to offend God. People nowadays are not scared of God. A lot of people curse God. They blame God uh, if, if everything goes wrong. You blame God when, when everything is not going right for them. Then when everything is right, it's all about them. 
We see in Proverbs that the fear of the Lord gives us knowledge. It, it keeps us uh, it keeps us away. Um, it helps us stay away from evil. Stay away from temptations. The fear of the Lord prolongs our lives. Gives us the satisfying lives. It gives us riches, honor, and life. But without fear of the Lord, we close ourselves to the treasures of God's wisdom and knowledge. Without the fear of the Lord, we will flirt with evil and corrupt and be corrupted by it. Our lives are likely to be shortened by our refusal to heed God's word. Suffering uh, SCI, uh, uh, SCI, STDs, S and also SCI, because we we did not heed His word or, uh, on sexual relationships. We will not come to know. The love of God that gives us assurance and confidence of our salvation. When falling into sin, we will not be motivated to repent and turn to God. We will not be motiva motivated to truly work our own, work out our own salvation without fear of the Lord. We cannot please God. The fear of the Lord is very. It is part of our Christianity. Part of our. Uh, of our relationship with God, to have to give Him reverence, to give Him to give Him our awe, to give Him uh, uh, our respect. In Isaiah chapter six, sixty-six and verse one, verses one and two. Thus saith the Lord: The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand to me, and all these, all all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Only one person who trembles at his word, only the person who trembles at his word, has God's promise to receive his tender mercies. Psalm 103, verse 17 to 18. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon the fear, upon them that fear him, and is righteous unto children's children. To such as keep his commandment, covenant, sorry, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Only the person who trembles at his word has God's promise to receive his tender mercy. But how does one develop the proper fear of the Lord without going to the extreme of earlier generations? Developing the fear of the Lord. A fear, the fear of the Lord comes through the Word of God. Just as faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The same can be said for the fear of the Lord. Notice Deuteronomy chapter 31 verses 10 to 13. Chapter 31 of Deuteronomy verses 10 to 13. Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemn solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel has come to appear before the Lord, before the Lord thy God, in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and the, and the, and the nice stranger, that is within my gates, that they may hear, and that they may learn, and the fear of the Lord, and the fear, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law, and all, and that their children which have not known anything may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, as long as ye live in the land whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. In this, uh, in this passage, the children of Israel were told together every seven years to read and hear the word. For what purpose? That they may learn to fear the Lord. As one reads the word of God, they should gain a healthy degree of the fear of the Lord. You know, the more we, we read the Bible, the more we, we meditate upon it, we see, we find God's 
power. We see his, uh, the, the things that He has done here on earth, the things that He has done not to, for us. As we continue to read the Word of God, we should gain a healthy degree of the fear of the Lord. Consider, consider the words of Paul in Romans chapter 2, verses 4 to 11. Romans chapter 2. Open the Bible over there. Romans chapter 2. Verses 4 to 11. Uh, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of righteous judgment of God, who, who will render it to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance in well doing seek for glory and honor and immortal immortality. Eternal life, but unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteous indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. We learn more about the fear of the Lord the more we read the Word of God. We learn to fear God more and more the more we get closer to Him. We give Him the respect, the, the, the reverence. It's also considered words, uh, it's also considered words of Peter in, chap in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 7 to 14. But the heavens and the earth which which are now by the same word are kept in store, the servants of fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as thou as a thousand years and a thousand, a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as men count slackness, but is long suffering to us more, not willing that any should perish, but shall, but all should should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as thief in the night, as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away in a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in in all holy conversations? conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heaven being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye, that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may find in him in peace, without spot, and blameless. To fear... We can see the signs of the time happening now. I mean, we've been seeing it, but even more today. The coming of the Lord is is very imminent. Why is it that a lot of a lot of Christians, a lot of us, are don't have the same reverence, don't have the same awe, don't have the same respect, don't have the same fear that? They used to have when they talk about Jesus, when they talk about God, when they come to the house of worship. The, the word of God properly used will maintain a proper balance. It is important to emphasize, however, that to avoid extremes, we must read all of God's word. Some read only those portions will reveal God's love and mercy and have no fear of the Lord. Others emphasize the fire, hell, and brimstone passages, and knowing nothing of God's everlasting loving kindness. The, that, the one involves an attitude of permissiveness that belittles God's holiness and justice. The other develops a, a psychosis of terror that forgets God's grace and compassion. Even in the passages no, noted above, the context of each speak much of God's grace and forgiveness for those who will repent. 
So we must be careful how we use the word of God. By use it, we must. The fear of the Lord. Do we walk in the fear of the Lord? In conclusion, the psalmist said, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in the reverence of all about him. In Psalm 89, verse 7. Why do we need to fear the Lord? So we will be sure to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. The warning is necessary for us. It is written in Hebrews, Let us therefore fear the Lord, lest promise being left of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them. They heard it in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11. Let us say, with there, therefore, to enter into the rest, to that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. With the proper fear of the Lord, we will work out. We will work out our salvation. We will labor to enter into that heavenly rest. The proper fear of the Lord. We will give God the reverence, the awe, the fear, the respect. Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse one. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Are we perfecting holiness in the fear of God? Are we uh, spending our time getting closer to God? Are we walking in the fear of the Lord? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank the Lord for this wonderful day and beginning of this word. We thank the Lord for this reminder of who you are. Of the reminder, Lord, of, of your great love, your great uh, mercy, and also the, the power to, to uh, To teach us, Lord, uh, when we are doing what we're, we are doing is wrong. Pray, Lord, to continue to guide us, continue to protect us, continue to uh, teach us, Lord, of, uh, of about you. May you continue to help us walk in the fear of the Lord. Pray, Lord, to continue to work in our lives. We give to you, Lord, the rest of the day. May you continue to, to guide us and protect us. We give to you everything. Written by calling glory and all the praise in Christ's most precious name. We pray. Amen.